Okay, y'all. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. Hold on. I gotta push this over so I can get this shadow out the way. Okay, much better. Um Hello friends. Tell me again. That will be lovers and friends. All right, let me share this to Hello. Like rules, post, share. Who else? To King. Yes. And share this out to Black Women. Yes. There we go. All right. We are all shared out on Facebook. Let's get ourselves. Everybody is going live now. Are you kidding me? Okay. What I say we want to call this? Welcome to build a bag academy. Hey friends, hello. Hi phenomenal chefs. Facebook friends, please um say hi as you come in. Hey, Miss Whitney. Facebook friends, please say hi as you come in so I can greet you because Facebook does not tell me who's watching unless y'all say hello. All right, I got to move everything over because uh, this lighting situation, okay. Move this over just a tad. I need a, uh, a lighting technician, y'all. I'm just kidding. This is a one woman production. We do what we can. Yeah. Y'all here for the knowledge, not the production, right? At least I hope. Okay. That's good. Okay. So tonight, guys, we have um, some interesting stories. Uh, if you are a 21 Savage fan, we got some for you. Hey, Margaret, how you doing, girl? Um, if you are like, you know, high-end items like Hermes or a Birkenberg. We've got a story for you about that. Uh, and for those of y'all who are into verses, I have a very, um, I want to ask y'all a question. Okay. All right. So we've got a fun show ahead of us. We're getting started in two minutes. Make sure that at 8.05 you share this out to your peoples, um, you know, so they can Discover your girl like you discovered me. Don't be selfish. Share me out. My love is for everybody. <laughs> um, I hope your week is going well. How was your Wednesday? We are we are at the, you know, smack dab in the middle of the week, y'all. I hope that your week is going well, that it's productive. We're moving into the end of the week. We're going to be able to relax in a couple of days. So, you know, life is good. No complaints over here. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to think if I have any announcements for y'all. I'm sweating. Why am I so hot? It's just because I'm hot. I'm just a, I'm a hot girl. I do hot things. <laughs> I love Megan, y'all. I love Megan the Stallion. She's so funny. You're waiting for... Oh, that is tonight. Yeah. What time is that on, Margaret? Let me know. Maybe. Maybe I will tune in because I'll be honest with you. I did not tune into the presidential debate because I will not watch that man, but I might tune into the vice presidential debate. So what time does it come on, Margaret? Let your girl know. Um, yes. So super excited about today's stories uh, and getting them out to you. The first one is really going to be interactive. So I'm going to need you guys to put on your thinking caps. Nine Eastern Standard Time. Okay, so we're on we're on the we're on the same coast, uh, Margaret. I'm on Eastern Standard Time too, so I can just watch it right after the show. All right, perfect timing. I'll make sure that we get off at eight forty-five at the latest, uh, so you know everybody has time to grab their snacks, their drinks, and you know sit down for the debate. All right, okay, it is eight oh five. So let me put a pause on this. And let's hit record. 
Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. Uh, if this is your first time watching or if you're hearing the playback on the podcast and you're like, who's this lady? Uh, I'm Natalie Pierre-Lewis. I'm the host of the show and I'm the owner and operator of NPL Consulting LLC, a business formation firm. What that means is I help people like you you, 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 and you get your uh, business paperwork together. So things like getting your business registered with the state, making sure that you have EIN numbers and DUNS numbers, making sure you have appropriate contracts so you don't get burned by clients and business partners, uh, helping you with brand protection strategies so people aren't out here stealing your logo and so you aren't out here inadvertently using someone else's logo. Um, and also helping you develop hiring policies that don't get you sued for discrimination. <laughs> all right, so those are important things. If you're wondering why I'm qualified... Toby, you all right? If you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you do all of those things... Uh... Hold on a second, guys. Is everything all right? Lorenzo, is everything all right? Okay. Could you mind closing my door? Thank you. Sorry, y'all. Something was happening at the front door. I thought uh, something was going on. Anyway, um, so yes. Uh, so if you're wondering why I'm qualified to help you do all of those things, I am a licensed attorney, have been one for 14 years and counting Hello Sharp Shoot Media. I have started multiple businesses for myself and others, both online and offline. I've had many careers in the realms of entrepreneurship, the law, education, hospitality, and administrative support. And most important, I'm very passionate about making business and legal education as accessible to everyone as possible. Not everybody has the time, the money, or the desire to go to business school or to law school, but a lot of you have amazing business ideas. And if you're going to be successful in business, there are just some things that you need to know there's no way around it so if you're in the startup phase of your business or if you just have this burning business idea that you have had for years and you don't know how to get it started i'm the person that you want to talk to okay so how are you going to get in contact with me you're going to go to linktree forward slash npl consulting firm that is the only link in my bio on instagram and it is all over my page on uh facebook okay at linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. You're going to be able to book yourself a free 15 minute consultation if you are a first time client. So, hey, hey, free 15 minute consultation. You're also going to be able to download the free biz launch cheat sheet that will help you choose and start your dream business in seven days or less. And I have had testimonials as to how effective it is. Check my, uh, you know, feed on my Instagram. Um, as well, you can book a, a full coaching session and you can peruse my array of video trainings and digital products. I write a lot of ebooks. I do a lot of video trainings. In particular, the ones at Linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. We have the Let's Get EIN numbers training and the DUNS numbers training, where I literally take you to the sites and we apply for our EIN and DUNS numbers in real time. I also have the operating agreement uh, training that shows you how to create a single member LLC operating agreement so you can open a business bank account. And I also have the Protect Your Biz video training that is a crash course in intellectual property. So I take you through trademarks, patents, and copyrights so that you know how to protect your intellectual property out in these streets. All right. So go check out linktree forward slash NPL consulting firm. Your girl does what she does very well. But moving on, that's enough about me. Let's talk about the show. For those of you who might be new, even though I think we've got, you know, a core group of, you know, the home team here. This is the way that it works. I pull stories from the news, stories from uh, blog sites, stories that you guys send me. I actually got our last story tonight from Miss Whitney. Um, and I... Pull the ones that have lessons that we can learn as business owners and we discuss them, okay? So this is the time for us to get our opinions in there, our comments, our questions, as long as they are respectful. And I am going to ask you um, some questions, so keep your uh, your ears open, you know, open your eyes, take some notes if you need to. Uh, but this is interactive, all right? It's more fun when we, when we take, when we participate. So I'm expecting participation from y'all, okay? Not that that's ever been a problem because y'all are very opinionated here and I love it. Okay, so let's get started on our first story of the evening. Do we have any 21 Savage fans in the house? If you are a fan of 21 Savage, give me a 21 in the comments. If Or if you have heard of 21 Savage, if you've seen his picture, 
21 Savage. If you know who he is, give me a 21 in the comments, okay? Now, for those of you who may not know who 21 Savage is, just give me a no in the comments, and I'm going to tell you who 21 Savage is. 21 Savage is the hottest British rapper in the game. I'm just kidding. Actually, uh, 21 Savage, he is a rapper out of Atlanta. Now, um, it was recently we found out that he was, he's by birth British, but apparently came over to the U S um, when he was pretty young, uh, and has a and acclimated to American society and has become one of the top new rappers in the game. Uh, Hey, Lo Hey, Lolo, Margaret Massey, you don't know who he is. Okay. So I'm giving you the background. Thank you. Phenomenal chefs. You know who 21 is, right? And 21, he's been doing his thing out there, putting out his records, investing his money, trying to teach people how to, you know, uh, you know, how to, how to not go broke, how to make money, things like that. 21's out here doing the things he knows how to take care of his business. Um, and 21 Savage, he is a trendsetter in particular. Apparently 21 Savage came up with this word, word called yes, sir, ski. Spelled Y-E-S-S-I-R-S-K-I-I-I. -I -I -I. <laughs> okay, I'm going to spell that one more time for you. Y-E-S-S-I-R-S-K-I-I-I. -I -I. Yes, Skursky. All right. Uh, apparently, he it was originally an ad lib on a song that he did with Little Uzi Vert on his Eternal Atake album. But it's become kind of his signature thing. Um, but he is actually getting, he's getting upset because people are starting to use his word. Um, in particular, the two rappers, one by the name of Little Pump and one by the name of Doughboy, they are each coming out with songs that are titled Yes Sirsky. And 21 Savage is not happy. He said, I deserve 50% of any song that uses my word Yes Sirsky, right? So, uh, so this, this first story is actually a quiz for you guys, because I want to see how much you have learned about the trademark process. Um, hold on. Lolo Vaughn said, apparently he's friends with Morgan Freeman. He narrated his entire last, he, okay, I gotta go listen to that. I gotta go hear the voice of God narrate 21 Savage's, uh, album, Lolo Vaughn's. Thank you for letting me know that. All right. So 21 Savage wants to protect Yeserski, right? So. My esteemed audience, my intelligent audience, my audience that has stuck with me, what would be the best way for 21 Savage to be to protect this word, yes, Sirsky, right? What do you think he would need? What type of legal protection would 21 Savage be looking for in protecting the word, yes, Sirsky? Would he be looking for a trademark? Would he be looking for a copyright? Or would he be looking for a patent? What do you think, right? Let me know. What do you think would be the best way for 21 Savage to be able to protect this one word, yes, sir, ski? That he does, that he wants 50%. Margaret Massey said trademark. Janita said a copyright. Um, ladies, Margaret had it this way. Uh, Mar Margaret has it. It's the trademark. The reason why it's not a copyright, Janita, is because copyrights protect, you know, full bodies of work. So if 21 Savage had written a song called Yes, Sir, Ski, he would be able to copyright the song lyrics and the music. If he, you know, wrote a book called Yes, Sir, Ski, he would be able to copyright the contents of the book. If he had, you know, uh, created a painting or a sculpture and named it Yes, Sir, Ski, he could get a copyright for that piece of work, right? It has to be an entire body of work. That, um, and this is just a word, so that is why it's not a copyright. So good for you, Margaret. Good for you, Phenomenal Chefs. Hey, 76 Grim K. Hey, Brilliant Beauty. Yes, yes, Janita, yes, I'm glad you got it, okay? So the best um, the best course of action for 21 Savage, if he wants to protect this word, yes, sir, ski, would be a trademark. Now, we know trademarks protect you in a particular way. Who can tell me what is the protection that a trademark does? What does a trademark do for you when you have a trademark? We talk about this all the time. What does a trademark do for you? Because if we're saying that 21 Savage, the best, um, the, the best course of action is a trademark, 
What does a trademark do for you? We've talked about this several times. We said a copyright protects your bodies of work, the, you know, your, your, create, your creations, like your books, your poems, your songs, your dances, things like that. What do we say that trademarks protect? Mm. I want to see if y'all got it. Mm. 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 I'm going to give y'all a little bit of time because I know y'all got to type. I know some of y'all might be driving. Please do not type if you are driving. Uh, but I'm going to give y'all a little bit of time because I know that uh, it may take some typing for you to get that in. Okay, Margaret Massey said, protects your name or slogan. Phenomenal Chef said, he needs to sell some merchandise. Yes, Phenomenal Chefs. And I got that, Margaret Massey, but Phenomenal Chefs was more... Um, but um, Phenomenal Chefs even got me ahead of the game. But yes, Margaret Massey, trademarks protect your names or your slogans in the marketplace. It says, I am selling this thing and this word, this name, this logo, it represents my stuff in the marketplace. Margaret B. Catching it. And Phenomenal Chefs took us to the next question because I was going to say, what do you got? What does um 21 Savage need to do to actually secure a trademark? And Phenomenal Chefs said he needs to sell some merchandise. Y'all be listen. I'm so proud. Look, I'm a proud mama. I got a tear coming down my eye, y'all. <laughs> but yes, oh uh, yes. 21 Savage, if he wants to protect Yesersky, his best course of action would be to apply for a trademark, which means that he needs to start creating merchandise for this Yesersky work. So, y'all, particularly if you are a fan of 21 Savage, what type of merchandise do you think he could come out with that, you know, to protect Yesersky? What could 21 Savage come out with? What would you purchase from 21 Savage? Yes, Margaret. What do you think? Now, of course, clothing is, is pretty, you know, standard. You can come out with t-shirts and hoodies. But is there anything that is um, singular to 21 Savage that he might be able to make a killing off of in the marketplace? I don't know enough about him to say what he's about. I know a couple of his songs, you know, they, they make me tap my toes. Um... But what could 21 Savage be out here selling for his Yes Sir Ski line? What do you, th any ideas? Y'all are some creative people. I see what y'all are selling out here. Y'all can sell salt to a slug. So I want to know some of your ideas for uh, 21 Savage and his uh, Yes Sir Ski line. Margaret Massey said caps. Yes, baseball caps, whatever, dad caps, whatever you want to call them. Okay, what else? What else we got? Mm. Mm. I'm going to take two more suggestions and then we're going to move on to our next story because we actually spent longer than I had expected to on this um, on this particular story. OK, um, but I will let those come in. Those other suggestions come in. But yes, I think 21 Savage, if he is serious about protecting Yesersky, he's going to have to file for a trademark, which means he's going to have to come up with some merchandise because he apparently wants 50 percent of the royalties from anybody who's using this word, yes, or ski. <laughs> uh, but good luck to you, sir. Uh, Janita said maybe jewelry, phone cases. Yeah, jewelry, I can see. Okay, jewelry, you know, like an iced out chain or something, maybe a design that's protected. Um, phone cases, could definitely see phone cases. Yes, sir, ski. Okay, I got it. Okay, y'all are some merchandising geniuses. Yes, all right. Good job, guys. Um, we, if we have some time, we'll come back to 21 Savage at the end and, and maybe brainstorm some more merchandise for him. If you listen in 21 Savage, if you watching, I just want like 1%. Just 1%. Just one. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway, moving on to our next story of the evening. Um, if you have heard of a Birkin bag, give me the purse emoji. If you have ever heard of a Birkin bag, give me a purse emoji. Uh, for those of you who may not know the Birkin bag, it is the it bag of the moment or one of them. Um, it's very expensive. Uh, all of the celebrities, you know, have it. I actually listened to a podcast a few years ago that talked about, you know, the process of getting a Birkin bag because you can't just purchase a Birkin bag. You have to first find a person that sells it and then you basically have to convince them to sell it to you. Um, but yeah, thank you, 76 Grim K. But yeah, Birkin bags are pretty much, thank you, Margaret. They are kind of like the status bag of the moment, right? Thank you, Phenomenal Chefs. Um, and Birkin bags, they are produced by Hermes. 
Thank you, Open Arms Cleaning. Thank you, Janita. They are produced by Hermes, um, and they can cost, you know, six figures and up. Uh, the bags are very expensive. I don't understand why you need a bag that costs somebody's salary, but I don't have that type of money, and, you know, maybe one day I, I will understand. Either way... Uh, Birkin bags are very, very expensive and not everybody has, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to blow on a bag. Um, so there is a company out here that was trying to make it easier for you guys to have low cost luxury. Now I want my crafters to please perk up your ears. There is a company called Frank Atelier. They are a Korean company. Um, and they were... Uh, they were <laughs> offering classes to help people construct their own designer bags. Now, not only were they showing you how to construct a bag, they were providing you the material. So you could get the Birkin bag material. You could get that Louis Vuitton material cut in the, the, the right way. And they would show you how to put the bag together. My esteemed colleagues... Do you think that Hermes was happy when they heard that Frank Atelier was trying to teach people how to make Birkin bags? What do you think Hermes did? What do you think Hermes did when they found out that Frank Atelier was tr teaching people how to build a bag? It was welcome to, that's why I named the show Welcome to Build a Bag Academy. Frank Atelier said, you don't have six figures for a Birkin bag? Don't worry. I got you. If you got $10,000, I'm going to teach you how to make your own Birkin bag. What do you think Hermes said? <laughs> yes, open arms cleaning. Shut it down with the exclamation points. Now, Hermes filed suit against Frank Atelier in Korea. Now, I know we usually talk about U.S., um, U US you know, cases, but the Hermes is a worldwide brand. Everybody wants a Birkin bag. 76 Grim K said, nope. Hermes went to Korea to Seoul and said, excuse me, these people in your country, they are trying to, they are teaching people how to make our six figure bags for a 10th of the price. We have trademarks. We bring y'all money. If you want these Birkin bags to keep coming back to Korea, please shut it down. So the Korean court, um, phenomenal stuff said, sued them. Open arms cleaning said $10,000 is still too high. Girl, you and me both. Um, hey, building your our youth. Um, either way, the court in South, in Korea said, um, Frank Atelier, what you're doing is illegal. You're violating trademarks. You need to shut this thing down. Why I picked this case? I see y'all out here, my crafting friends. I'm in those Facebook groups. I see y'all with your Gucci materials, with your coach materials, with your whatever designer materials. You don't want to end up like Frank Atelier in front of the Korean court. I don't want to be in front of a Korean court. I don't want to be in front of a U.S. court. When you are out here making these knockoff items, it's not a, well, I'm, well, I'm not, okay. It's not a victimless crime. Now, the victims, yes, they have a lot of money, but they have also invested a lot of money into these brands. Margaret said, nope, put them on notice to stop it. Yes, girl, they did, okay? Uh, Hermes is a worldwide brand. Bir the Birkin bag is a status symbol. It's a six figure bag and you're trying to undercut them and show people how to make a six figure bag for $10,000. Now I wouldn't, I don't care for either one, either way. I, I don't need to spend 10 K on a bag. That's just who I am. I also don't need to spend six figures, but there are people out there who like bags, right? But if you can't afford it, you just can't. That doesn't mean that you go and get yourself a knockoff, especially with a brand like Hermes. They are very protective of their brand. They will take you to court and they will take all your money. So Frank Atelier, they have shut the operation down. There will be no more build a bag classes being taught. <laughs> okay. So this is a word of warning to my crafters who, if you know somebody out here who's making these fake bags or whatever, you know, the, the Gucci, domino sets and whatever please let them know that there are actual consequences i can't reach everybody and some people think that i don't know what i'm talking about but 
I want y'all to know that these in, these intellectual property rights, they are real, they are worldwide, and these companies are not playing with you. Hermes ain't playing about the Birkin bag. That bag brings one bag. Could probably pay the rent for all the Hermes, you know, standing things for, for the year. So if they lose out on sales for the Birkin bag for this $10,000 class, that is a measurable loss, right? Because think about it. Let's say five people, let's just say five people um, invested in the Frank Atelier class for $10,000. So that's $50,000, right? One Birkin bag, let's just say on the cheap end, a Birkin bag costs $100,000. Hey, Antoinette, right? So those same five people who invested in the $10,000 class, Instead of, you know, Hermes being able to gain $500,000 of revenue from the sale of the Birkin bag, they lost out on all that revenue because Frank Atelier is showing people how to make knockoffs for $10,000. So this is the real economic impact of knockoffs, guys. You're, you, you, now, look, I'm not shedding any tears over Hermes. I'm sure they've got more than enough money to, you know, last them for two, three, even four lifetimes. But at the end of the day, they still have been in the business for a long time. They have built up the name of this company. That's why it is worth so much money. So you can't just go out here and show people, oh, I'm gonna show you how to make this six figure bag for 10% for of the price. That is illegal. That's violating intellectual property. That's why these companies protect their designs. So Hermes got Frank Atelier shut down in Korea and said, there is no more Build a Bag Academy. Go to Hermes and find it yourself, okay? All right. Uh, okay, we're making good time. Last story of the evening. Before we move on, I want to remind you guys that you are watching NPL Legal Dish. This is my Monday through Thursday live broadcast where I teach business and legal concepts using pop culture and celebrity news. If you are in the startup phase of your business and you need a, a, a lawyer friend to help guide you through the perilous journey of entrepreneurship, uh, I'm here to help you. Go to linktree forward slash MPL Consulting Firm and book your free 15-minute consultation today, okay? Uh, Margaret Massey said, coach is my designer. Girl, you even better than me. I, I'm just like, I'm just not a name girl. It's it's never been my thing. You know, I'm just like, if it's cute and I like it, I'll get it. But names have never been my thing. Anyway, Moving on to our final uh, story of the evening. If you watched any of the verses, if you watched any of the verses, please give me a V in the comments. Any of the verses. Um, now, if you don't know what verses is, verses has been um, in uh, an online, uh, I guess, musical battle, musical appreciation session between, you know, some of... Uh, Particularly Urban Music's most iconic, uh, I iconic artists. Thank you, Seventy Six Grim K. Uh, the last one they had was uh, Patti LaBelle versus Gladys Knight. They had Brandy versus Monica. They had Rick Ross versus Two Chains. They had Snoop versus DMX. Thank you, Janina. They had all the greats. Thank you, Open Arms Cleaning. Right. So. I'm sure y'all have had conversations with your friends or whoever, and you're like, ooh, you know who should do the next verses? Da 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 da. How many of y'all have said that Mary J. Blige should have a should have a verse of verses? If you have thought that if you have ever, if you have heard somebody say, or if you have thought that Mary J. Blige should have a verses, give me MJB in the comments. And if you have ever said that Tony Braxton should have a verses, give me a TB in the comments. And I'm gonna be honest. I said Mary Mary J. Blige could have a versus by herself. You could do old Mary versus new Mary. Tony Braxton, Tony Braxton has hits. I don't know if she has enough hits for a whole versus, right? But I love Tony Braxton. Don't get me wrong. Tony, yes, all day, every day. Um, but if you uh thought about seeing MJB anti beat, yes, Janita. Okay. Now it's great to speculate and, you know, create our own playlists and things like that of the artists that we would like to see in verses. But what we cannot do is rip off designs and trademarks that we know have been settled in and that are popular. So uh, is Miss Whitney still here? Miss Whitney sent me a photo today 
apparently somebody has created or is doing their own verses uh, of Tony Braxton versus Mary J. Blige, right? Um, 76 Grimke said TB is a better singer than Mary. To... Uh, I, th okay. Mary is not... I'm not going to say Mary is a perfect vocalist, but Mary gives you, like... She leaves her entire soul on the floor. And that's... And while Tony Braxton, she has an amazing voice... Mary is going to give you her wig, her heart, her tongue, everything. She's going to leave it on that stage, okay? And that, to me, is just kind of what puts her a little bit of a notch above Tony for me. Because I just like, you know, the commitment that she gives to her music. Um, thank you, Miss Whitney. Okay, so Miss Whitney, she sent me this photo. And I was like, and, and I looked at it. And I said, ooh, they doing a verses between Tony Braxton and Mary J. Blige, Margaret Massey said Tony Braxton be begs too much. Well, she she did that in the beginning, but she changed it up later on. She did. Remember, he wasn't man enough for me. <laughs> anyway, um, but you know, Miss Whitney, she sent me this photo, and I was like, oh shoot, Mary J. Blige and Tony Braxton are gonna do a versus. Bet I'm there. Sign me up. And then I look closer. And it was not sponsored by Versus. There was no Ciroc on there. It was being done by two random people on Facebook. They have ba they basically copied the um the poster format of Versus, put uh Mary and um Tony Braxton face the half thing like they did for Brandy and Monica in there, and said you know we're gonna be doing this on such and such a day. Go to so and so's Facebook and so and so's Facebook. Right? Hey C four C Global One. Let, do you, um, so I took the, the picture of Brandy and Monica's versus poster and I put it up against Mary, the one that, that they made for Mary J. Blige and Tony Braxton. I asked you guys if it was too close for comfort and 100% of you said yes. So I want to know from you guys, if you, if Swizz Beats, Timbaland, Apple Music, Ciroc, or any of these global brands and artists who are involved with versus, if they saw that flyer of this unauthorized verses of Tony Braxton and Mary J. Blige being promoted on Facebook, what do you think their first um, their first action would be? This is something that I want I want to hear from you guys um, because we talked about this too. If you see somebody out here, oh, Miss Whitney said I'm reporting them, right? But bef even before you report them, what's one of the things that they can do to be like, uh, excuse me, uh, y'all are violating our intellectual property. So if Swiss Beats, Timbaland, somebody at Apple or somebody at Ciroc somehow sees this flyer, don't go tagging them. I'm not trying to get nobody in trouble. What do you think would be their first step to getting uh, to, to, uh, to, with this uh, party? Build, building our youth clothing said legal action. Margaret Massey always coming through. Cease and desist. Yes. The first thing I uh, I can reasonably say that all of these parties would do had they seen this flyer is they would find these people and send them a cease and desist notification and say, hey, girl. Thank you, LaShawn. Yes, cease and desist letter. They would be like, hey, girl. You know we own verses. I don't appreciate you out here trying to use our format to promote your, your little music thing. Um, 76 Grimke said, they clearly need to watch your podcast. Send them a, send them a C and D letter. Yes. Look, I'll be out here trying to teach the people, but you, you can lead people to water. You cannot make them drink, right? Ladies and gentlemen, don't touch people's logos. I'm not going to report those people who had that flyer, but I will tell you that if anybody who is involved with verses sees that flyer, I can guarantee you that there will be some trouble, a rumble in the jungle, whatever you want to call it. But somebody's going to make a phone call or send a letter. All right. Um, so as much as I would love to see a verses between Tony Braxton and Mary J. Blige, I'm not trying to get in trouble with, you know, intellectual property for that. If you want to have your own little playlist, that's cool. You could have done anything else. So I want, what do you guys think they could have done to, to promote this, you know, to promote this musical experience? Now, I'm sure Mary J. Blige and Tony Braxton are not going to be there because Mary J. Blige, why would she? And Tony Braxton, she ain't doing that. Okay. Um, but 
what could this what could these people have done to make this less of an infringing event what could they have done how could they have designed the flyer how could they have presented it to make it less of um less infringing and if you have not seen the poster go to my facebook and instagram stories and go look at the picture when i tell you they ripped it off from the rooter to the tutor um hey lose to win um for me, they could have done tons of things. They could have changed the color scheme. They could have changed, you know, where they put the lettering. They could have taken out the V. They literally used the V. They used a different font for the V, but it was still a very noticeable V. Um, you could have just said, you know, battle clash, something. But you are trying to ride the coattails and the popularity of verses so people can come watch your Tony Braxton, Mary J. Blige playlist playoff. No, uh, Margaret Massey said, yes, a watch party, right? A watch party. Now we know that Facebook has put, um, the kibosh on these watch parties. They specifically have put in their terms of service now that you are not to use the live feature to, uh, have, you know, to promote musical listening experiences, for your audience. So I don't know how these people plan to get away with this Mary J. Blige, Tony Braxton playlist playoff. Um, but y'all better hope that Swiss Beats and Timbaland don't find out because it's not going to be pretty for y'all. Okay. Uh, so that being said, be careful, you know, don't, don't, if you see versus battles out here, just know that there are people perpetrating and that just because it says versus on it doesn't mean that it's an official event with verses and this is why intellectual property is um is important trademarks the big thing about trademarks is confusion is there a possibility of confusion in the marketplace when i saw this flyer when whitney sent it to me i thought it was an actual versus that was happening i was getting ready to mark off time in my calendar and set an alarm for myself so i could hear mary j blige and tony braxton sing and this is why uh, this is why trademarks are important because it comes with a certain quality behind it. When you see that name, you know, it's an item of quality. It's a service of quality. We have seen verses. It's been great time. So if I see something that I think is a versus, I'm like, Ooh, this is going to be so fun, right? They don't want that. They don't want that. There's only one versus. You can't just go out here copying our style. So, Good luck to these people trying to promote this Tony versus Mary uh, fake versus um, I don't wish you well because you're not supposed to do this. Uh, <laughs> All right. So those were the stories that I had for you tonight. Um, we're running a little over. Uh, but if you have any any questions, I'll give you all two minutes to get your questions in and then we'll close it out. But I do want to close out by 845 because I know that the vice presidential debates are happening at nine. And I know some of you want to watch. Um but yeah, if you have any questions about uh, the stories that we covered tonight about 21 Savage, about Hermes, about Mary versus Tony, uh, you know, drop them in the comments. Also, if you have any questions about the startup process, the business formation startup process, like how do you get your articles of incorporation, DUNS numbers, EIN numbers, contracts, uh, intellectual property, trademarks, patents, copyrights, hiring policies, um, now is the time to ask, okay? Uh, yeah, open arms couldn't said yes to debate. So y'all look, um, y'all know I, I didn't, I did not watch the presidential debate because I do not watch, um, the Cheeto. I refuse. However, I do believe that I will be tuning into tonight's vice presidential debate with Kamala and, uh, Mr. Pence. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so we are going to close out. I think we're good on questions. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. 76 Grim K. Uh, I'm glad that, like you're well and you're welcome. You know, thank you all for being here. I enjoy doing this show because of you guys, because of your participation, because of your energy. So thank you again for being here. Take care of yourselves. Um, you know, wash your hands, wear your masks. We'll be back here tomorrow night with more stories. If you find anything that you want to um send to me please please send it all right have a good night bye